Hey guys, welcome to another Workshop Wednesday. Today's video features glass jar art, such as this decoupaged vase and this painted vase. Both can be used for all kinds of purposes. For the first painted vase, for supplies, you will need a glass jar, painting tape or masking tape, a paintbrush, a paint tray, a rag or paper towel, and some acrylic paints. If you have a jar that has a sticky label that you can't remove, all you have to do is peel the label off as best as you can, mix one part baking soda with one part olive oil, rub it in and leave it in for a few minutes to soak, wipe it off, and voila, you have a clean jar. Now I'm taking my masking tape and I'm applying it to the jar to create candy stripes. You can do all sorts of different designs, but basically wherever you put the tape is where the paint will not show up. If your jar has raised designs like mine does, make sure you push the tape firmly down to prevent the paint from seeping under. And this is my finished design. Now I'm going to start mixing my paint here and I'm just using acrylic paint. I'm gonna do an ombre design. An ombre means that the tones of the paint color change from light to dark or dark to light. So I'm doing this very light yellow and then I'm gonna do a more warmer yellow and I'm also gonna do this metallic gold color now I'm ready to paint and I did make sure to put enough paint for two coats I'm gonna start with my metallic and just do a thin coat first and you can go back over it with a thicker coat. I did start painting the bottom of it, but I decided I wanted to leave it um, with no paint. So I'm just taking my rag and I'm wiping off that paint because it's still wet, it's super easy to clean and it looks like nothing ever happened. Now I've gone in and applied a second coat of paint to each section and this is what it looks like up close. The lighter colored could use a third coat, but I kind of like that you can see the brush strokes in it. I'm going to leave my jar to dry and I'm going to clean my brushes and put away all my supplies. Now that it's dry, I can peel off the tape. And this is what it looks like. This bottom part, I felt like it needed something. So I am going to go ahead and add a little detail to the bottom. Now I'm taking the smallest brush that I have and I'm going to use the end of it to do some dot designs. You could just really use any type of point, a pencil, a toothpick, and basically you dip it in the paint and you just poke it where you want it and it creates these dot designs. While that dries, I wanted to share some history behind painted glass art. Here are two examples of Islamic glass art courtesy of the Met. The left image is a bowl from 10th century. It's an example of lusterware, which is painted ceramic or glass whose color is very similar to stained glass, almost see-through. The other image is a large bottle from the late 13th century, a unique find. It is an example of enamel glass, a technique used today by heating glass enamel paint so the color is permanent. And now here is my dried design. I turned it into a base for my flowers by just adding some water and throwing my flowers in, of course. And because the paint is dry, it's obviously not going to come off, but I don't suggest washing it. So for the next project, we are going to decoupage. You will need a glass jar, a sponge brush, some decoupage glue like Mod Podge, and tissue paper. Glitter is optional. If you don't have Mod Podge, here is a recipe to make some. All you need to do is mix together one part white glue, like school glue, with one part water. Make sure you stir it up very well and you could store it even in a glass jar and it'll keep for a long time. So this step is optional, but I wanted to add some glitter to the jar. So I'm pouring some glitter into a tray here and I am mixing it in with some decoupage glue. I'm applying it to the inside of the jar and it should look something like this. It's going to be very white and the glitter might be a little clumpy, but eventually it'll dry clear. 
I'm going to set that aside to dry and I'm going to pick out my colors of tissue paper that I want to use. I kind of like all these colors to be honest, so I'm going to go ahead and rip them into smaller pieces, something like this. And you really just need a little bit of tissue paper for a small or medium sized jar. If you have a larger jar, you're going to need a lot more paper, but you can always rip some more later. Also, just to make a note that your jar should be wide enough for your sponge brush to go into. So if it doesn't have a wide mouth, this project might not work. Now I'm just ripping my tissue paper into different size pieces. If you wanted them to be more uniform or different shapes, you could just cut them out with scissors, but ripping is a lot easier to do. So here is my dried glitter. Once it's clear, you know it's ready to go. I'm taking my lid from the jar and I'm pouring some glue into it. Um, you don't have to do this, I just think it's easier to work with. I'm taking my sponge brush and I'm picking up some tissue paper and I'm applying it directly to the jar. If you skip the glitter step, this is exactly the same process, okay? You're just picking it up with their sponge brush or you can apply it directly with your hands to have more precise placement and just putting some glue onto the back of the tissue paper like this. I am kind of using the brush to smooth out the tissue paper to make sure that it's not too wrinkled. And I just keep adding more and more layers until I'm happy with it. I tried to do different patches of colors here and there, um, but I am coating the bottom all the way to the top of the jar. And this is what it looks like all finished. It needs to dry, of course, but you can see I have some, some texture showing through um, and you can still see the glitter in it. I'm gonna set that aside to dry. Now this is it all dried and ready to go. I'm just ripping off the tissue paper pieces that are sticking out from the top of it. And now it's ready to use. I'm using it to store some brushes. I don't recommend putting water in it, but you can pretty much use it to store any kind of art supplies. Please share your glass jar art creations with us using the hashtag imasartist or tagging us at imasmuseum. Visit us at our website, theimasonline.org to learn more and to support. Thanks so much for joining me for this Workshop Wednesday. Keep creating and I'll see you next time.